Hey everybody, welcome back. This is gonna be a video looking at a whole bunch of different engines and how it treats caustics and reflected light. If you aren't yet, please become a subscriber by hitting that subscribe button and liking the video. It really helps me out as far as my viewership and keeping my videos relevant on the YouTube algorithm. You have no idea how much it really helps me out. All of the project files that you're gonna be seeing here is gonna be available in one package on my Gumroad, so you can check out the link in the video description down below. And let's go ahead and get started with these render engines. So the first that we're gonna look at here is Cycles. It's the engine that everybody pretty much learns on when they first start. And you can see here that we have Shadow Caustics available, or at least it's turned on. If you don't know what that is, check out the video I made about Shadow Caustics. You can see up I just put a card in at the top and I'll put a link down in the video description. But you can see here that um, before what you used to have to do is do a whole bunch of nodes set up to make this available over here. I'm just gonna turn it off just so you can see what it used to look like. So if we turn this off, you can see that's pretty much what it used to look like. It was a solid shadow and it kind of didn't look 100% realistic or anything because technically you should be able to see through glass and that's where that comes in right there. When it comes to caustics in glass, the shadow caustics is really cool, but I do know that there are limitations on the shadow caustics. So as far as I remember, I'm just gonna duplicate this over here just so I can you know, talk about a point. As far as I remember, there's a limit to how many objects can actually have a uh, shadow caustics available. So you just have to kind of keep that in mind when you start doing this. You might have to limit how many objects are there. But I do know that with the uh, newest updates, it does seem like when I pull these closer that the cast shadow caustics do seem to show up. So you can see that right there. That's going through the other sort of like liquid that I turned on here. If I turn this off and I turn this on, you can see that there is this right here, which is a refracted light going through there. So um, that seems to be an update from when I was doing some testing before. It might not be that way when you start to add volumetrics or something like that inside of here. But the shadow caustics do look pretty good, um, especially if you have a scene where it's basically just glass like this. The only thing that makes this not as superior as another engine that I'm gonna talk about is the fact that it is not bi-directional. So you're just seeing the light hitting the object. Um, also, it doesn't really take into account the HDRI, um, but the way that the light is being calculated here, it's only calculating the light as it shoots from the light source into the object. So you're not actually getting reflected caustics, okay? And I'll explain more about what I'm talking about when we look at LuxCore. But if you're kind of like creating something where you need realism, but it's not 100%, you don't need a whole bunch of casted light and all of that, this engine is very capable of doing that provided you follow the steps that I show you in the Shadow Caustics video. Again, that is in the video description and linked earlier. The next one we're going to just briefly talk about is ProRender, which um, does have a lot of really amazing stuff that it does, but Caustics is really not the thing that um, sort of sets this engine apart from other engines. And even if I select the object here and I look at the materials, you can see that I have Allow Caustics enabled. If I turn it off and I turn it back on, sometimes you have to actually like reset this here. The allowing caustics, you know, it really doesn't do that much. And if we turn on the thin surface, you can see there that even though I turned on the thin surface, the shadow doesn't really change that much. And if we go in here and we take this and we change this to a point light and I move it closer like this. And if we turn around over here to just sort of like look at the back, let's go back to the shader editor here and we're gonna take this off, reset our viewer here. You can see that with this sort of object as large as it is, it really doesn't seem to have that much of a caustics effect. And even if I change some of these values to be a little bit closer to what you would expect to see in something like uh, cycles or something like that, if we take the refraction and we pop this up to 16, if we take the shadow here, let's also increase this. Whoops, that's a little bit too much. I didn't mean to put 165 in there. Um, doesn't matter because really we're not seeing a whole bunch of changes when it comes to how the refraction is happening in the actual scene. We're not seeing those light caustics and all that. So that's kind of a bummer. 
But I will say this about ProRender, when it comes to glass materials and all that, it does render very, very quickly. It's just a shame that the caustics are not something that is rendered very well inside of this program. So if you're trying to use ProRender for caustics, um, I would recommend using a different render engine. Now with Octane, it is sort of a different beast because the way that it handles lighting is a lot more of like a realistic uh, method. So they use meshes to actually project the lighting. So you don't get the same effects as you do using a regular spot lamp or something like that. And you're going to get a little bit of a different effect when you use the lighting setup inside of Octane. But I will say that it is definitely probably the most realistic as far as how it projects the uh, caustics and everything. Not quite as much variation in what you can do and how extreme you can push it uh, as compared to Luxcore, which we will talk about. But you can see here that the caustics that are being presented here look really, really great. If I pull this really, really close like this, you can see that the way that the caustics, the, um, the light is showing through that refracted object right there looks really awesome. And when we back it away and sort of make the size a little bit smaller, and then we can actually take the power here and whoops, let's just increase this a bit more. You can see that we can notice the calculation of the caustics over here and it's looking pretty awesome. So um, as far as the caustics are concerned for Octane Render, if you want something to look very realistic, but you don't need as much control over making the caustic effects that I'm gonna show you in Luxcore, this is definitely something that I would recommend using. Obviously to use this commercially, you do have to purchase a license, but for you to test it out and to sort of like make your own personal renders and things like that to make sure this is something you really want to use, you can download it. I do have a whole bunch of videos on how to use this engine on my channel, so you can check those out. I will link them down below. But you can see here that no matter where I put that, we do have a very, very cool way that it is presenting that caustic effect. And as far as I know, there's really no limitation on how many objects you can have to cast this caustic look in your scene. So I do recommend this if you want realism. It has some really great effects. And if you have a fast graphics card with ray tracing and all that, the rendering is extremely fast as compared to Luxcore. Now, with all those things said about the other render engines, the, the goods and the bads, I have to you know hand it to Luxcore that this is the absolute most underappreciated render engine for Blender, I think, in its entirety, in its existence. Not only do the developers keep up with the new updates of Blender pretty well, the quality you can get is amazing. And with the new updates that they've done, the speed of rendering with something like a 3090, which is what I have, or anything with ray tracing technology, it is making it to where you can probably render these animations and them look really, really good and render pretty fast. You can see here that I have light tracing enabled here, which is right here in the options. If I put this on 20% or something like that, it will make the rendering even faster. And this does use the CPU and the GPU to render this out because it uses the calculations to look at the bi-directional view here. But it really is amazing the quality you can get the types of caustics that you can get, the control that you can have in how you spread the uh, the reflected light like this across. And if I take the light here and I move it closer like this, for example, and I put it up right next to the glass, you can see the sort of effects that you can have here. And what's really amazing about the bi-directional uh, quality that you can get from this is that not only can you get the caustics from glass where the light is reflected or refracted through the objects. But if I go into the materials and I actually add a metallic, which I will do right now, you can actually get reflected light from this as well. So if I go to the 3D viewport and I grab this light and I put it up right up against it like this here, you can see that that light is now being reflected off, which most engines do not have this option. Octane does, it does do this effect and it looks really good, but I have to say that Luxcore, just the way, the, the ease of use of Luxcore and the quick way that it can render out these caustics, especially since they have implemented the new ray tracing cores inside of these GPUs really is astonishing to me. And it is the, you know, uh, absolutely 
the most underappreciated engine that is available for Blender. Not only is it free, uh, not only does it do all of this amazing stuff, but the developers have been able to keep up really well with the updates of Blender to make this available to everybody to use for professional use, you know, commercial use, your own projects, all that kind of stuff. Is it the most user-friendly? Is it as user-friendly probably as Cycles? I don't think so. There are some things that are a little bit difficult, like using volumes and stuff like that, that require you to do a little bit more work and all that. But just the fact that you can have the amazing look of the glass materials with this sort of caustics look really puts it at the top for the best engine to use for caustics. And if you want, you can check out on my channel. I do have a whole bunch of playlists here. I have Luxcore. I have this one right here for underwater scenes and a whole bunch of other stuff that you can check out on my YouTube channel that's all free. And of course, you can go to the website and download the engine for free and install it. And I do recommend that you actually go and you get the development build. I will put a link down below in the video description where you can grab this thing. I'll put links for everything else too, but this is the one that will actually work with the newest builds uh, that have been released for Blender. Go into the forums, just get involved, share if you can on any sort of platform because one of the things I've learned recently is that the Luxcore devs have been a little bit down in the dumps because not it, it seems like not a lot of people are really taking a look at it. And it, it's a real shame because this engine really is incredible. And I do recommend that everybody get on here and learn how to use this engine because it is a lifesaver as far as making your projects look realistic and just increasing the kind of projects that you thought you could do using Blender. So that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope that you got something out of this. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about these engines, which one you think looks the best or works the easiest for you and what you'd like to see in the future. Please like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. It really helps out the channel. And if you really wanna go above and beyond, you can become a patron. You can check out the link below in the video description or you can become a member to the channel where you basically help me create these videos by giving me some uh, monetization to help offset the cost of creating these videos. Thanks so much to my patrons. You guys are awesome. And thank you for watching. And I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.